1984 by George Orwell Dramatized by Jonathan Holloway with Christopher Eccleston as Winston Smith Winston, wake up. Mother? Mother, you took the bread. Yes. Yes. Because you were hungry. Yes. Yes. You shouldn't have. I know. I know. You can't help it, I forgive you. I, I, I don't mind for myself. Is my sister going to die? We're all going to die. Please don't. Don't die, Mother. You are forgiven. I don't want the last thing you heard from me to be a recrimination. Go outside. Mother? Go and find something interesting. But, Mother. You've got to go now. I won't be here when you come back. Winston, in fact, you mustn't come back. Mother. Kindness, Winston. Remember to be kind. Go now. You must go now. Out through the shell hole. Lovely boy. Walk in a straight line. Keep walking. Kindness, Winston. Remember to be kind. Mother. Mother. <laughs> These bleak scenes cannot help but make the gorge rise in our threats. Our pioneer settlers hacked down. The enemy would not even waste a bullet. Small children. This little girl hacked her part while she screamed for mercy. We, the living, stand in testimony to their bravery, their humanity, and must every day remind ourselves it's a citizen's duty to resist the enemy, support our troops, and revenge the deaths of our fellows. Fellow citizens of Victory Mansions, and so we begin another day determined to do our bit. And that means being healthy and alert, strong for our nation and for Big Brother. Alert to the enemies without and within. We'll start with stretches. Feet flat on the floor and reaching up. That's it. Barker, in flat 36, you can do better than that. Imagine there's a bar running across above you six inches from your fingertips. Stretch, man! Stretch! What's the matter with you, Smith? <laughs> what? 6079, Smith, W, stand up straight. Hands above your head. Stretch! That's it, Smith. You have to show some gumption, Smith. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorries! Don't come into it, Smith. I'm not well. I'm... I'm... I've not been well for some time. Uh... Nonsense. What you might have been doesn't matter. It's the future that counts. Look to the future. Who controls the past, Smith? The party controls the past. Who controls the future? Who controls the past controls the future. And what about the present? Who controls the present controls the past. And now let's see which of us can touch our toes. Stretch up. And then right over forwards from the hips. Stretch up on one, over and down on two. Ready. One and two and one and two and one and two. I have a very bad back. I'm 39 and I've had four children. You can see my knees aren't bent when I go forward. Smith! Straighten those knees. My back. You can do it. It's a matter of wanting to, of getting it right. And one and two. Anyone under 45 is perfectly capable of touching his toes. Ah, oh, Smith! We don't all have the privilege of fighting in the front line, and so we ought to jolly well keep fit. Remember our boys on the Malabar front, and remember the sailors in the floating fortresses. Just think what they have to put up with. Oh, of course you're right. I, I, I'm i very sorry. You are the outer party and the foot soldiers of English socialism. Your privileges bring responsibilities, and one, and two, and you are neither mindless proles nor heroes of the inner party. But Ingsoc relies on the outer party, and you cannot and may not shirk. That's it. That's better, comrades. That's better, Smith. Thank you. Even to consider shirking is getting close to thought crime. One and two and one and two. Rest. That's good. And I have some more news. The new radio cameras have been fitted in the corridors. Victory Mansions is privileged to be the first residential block in this sector to have them. 
They will replace the corridor telescreens that couldn't see around corners. These will make us safe. Powered by electrical motors, they can turn and follow a suspect. Thank you for this gift, big brother. Thank you for keeping us safe. Remember, always do the best you can. For Oceania, for big brother. Just the man I was looking for. Ah, Sim, how are you? Working flat out. We need to get the 10th edition of the Newspeak Dictionary out as soon as damn it. We're still using the nine. <laughs> well, you would be, wouldn't you? Of course. Woolly mindedness? That's not what I put you down for. Now, now, me, on the other hand, there's still too much of the poet in it. But of course it's uh, out with the old, in with the new. Ah, it's thrilling. Chasing down old, unnecessary words and chucking them down the memory hole, so to speak. Oh, watch what you're doing. The cue's moving. What was it you wanted? We're getting that language into its final shape. We're, we're destroying <laughs> words. Scores of them. Hundreds of them every day. We're cutting the language to the bone. But uh, big victory this morning. It's been staring at me in the face, but for some reason I hadn't clocked it. What's the opposite to bad? Good, I suppose. But of course... That doesn't make sense, does it? That the so-called opposite should bear no relationship to the thing it's up against. So, we came up with ungood. Just like that. And then we couldn't stop. For excellent, read plus good. For splendid, double plus good. And so on. Sounds exciting. Look over there. I mean, glance, don't stare. Ah, O'Brien. Nice to see those inner party fellows coming along and eating with the rest of us. He takes a particular interest in the new speak dictionary, you know. He's a great support to us. He looks like an intelligent man. Shh! Why would you do that? Don't say that word. Sorry. <sighs> I love days like today. But do you want gin? I suppose so. I'll keep my place in the queue, will you? I'll fetch it. Save some time. But what was it you wanted? Oh, yes. Razor blades, old fellow. Have you got any going spare? No, none. I've tried everywhere. They don't seem to exist anymore. I've been using the same blade for six weeks. Look at this old fellow laugh. That's the spirit. Look at him hold up his hand. Only one finger left. Frostbite got the rest, but he's not complaining. Working in those roofless sheds in the north, casting the iron bombs that will destroy our enemies. Look at his big smile. We can all take heart from this jolly fellow. All follow his example. No complaining. Complaint is no crime. <laughs> Where did you go to the hangings last night? I was working. I'll watch them on the telly screen tonight. Well, it was a nice evening. Perhaps room for a good summer. I know you. I see through you. I know perfectly well why you don't go to the hangings. What? Your thought crimes are all over your face. They'll hang you too. What was that, Smith? <laughs> I missed what you said. I said, I, I think we're in for a good summer. I hope so. Mm, it spoils things when they tie their feet together. Mm. I like watching them kick. And no sacks! So you can see their blue tongues. <laughs> what about you? Oh, you know. Are you going to use your saccharin tablet? Probably not. Mind if I... Uh... Go ahead. Mm. I like your articles. But, you know, I don't think you really appreciate Newspeak, Smith. When you write it, you're, you're still thinking in old speak. I've read some of the pieces you write for the Times occasionally. They're, they're good enough. But they're um, translations. In your head, you compose in old speak, then converge it on the page. In your heart, you'd prefer to stick to old speak with all its useless shades. I do try, you know. No, certainly. Um, as I say, they're good. But they could be better. I read your piece about the athletics champion, Ogilvy. Now he died on a floating fortress. Very moving, but too flowery. People don't want to hold thoughts like that in their heads anymore. I made him up completely. 
The odd person I was erasing from the newspaper was too connected across a range of stories and photos. I had to import an entirely new personality. Hmm. Not sure you ought to go around saying things like that. In fact, you definitely shouldn't. Perhaps not. You and I know what we do, and we're professionals. But a party enthusiast might be listening. In fact, truthfully, I wish I hadn't heard you. You have to think about others, you know, Smith. Sorry. Sorry for what? Didn't hear a thing. Thank you. No, you know, Newspeak is the only language in the world whose vocabulary gets smaller every year. In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible because there will be no words in which to express it. Every year, a fewer words and a narrower range of consciousness. <laughs> the revolution will be complete when the language is perfect. By 2050, not a single person will be able to understand the conversation we're having now. Except perhaps the proles. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say. They're not human beings. You need to take them seriously. You know, we shan't need the old slogans even. We shan't need freedom is slavery once the concept of freedom has been erased. Are you going to finish that, Jin? No. <laughs> You have it. Mm. You know, I swear this month's is better than usual. Maybe we captured somewhere that grows juniper berries. Come on, Smith. Don't dawdle. Can I have your meat? Help yourself. I need to borrow the queue for the search. A search has been ordered. Line up to be searched. Remove all outer garments. Come on, citizens. You know the drill. Let's get through this. Backs against the wall. Jackets open. They'll call us duck speakers on account of our meaningless whacking. Duck speakers? It's waiting for you in the new dictionary. Excuse me. Thank you, sir. Oh, no. Here comes your neighbour from Victory Mansions. An excellent party man. Yes, of course. And a bloody idiot. And the sweatiest man I've ever met. Oh, I don't know. Hello, hello, Smith Syme. <laughs> Sounds like a tongue twister. What? <laughs> Smith Syme, Syme Smith. Hello, Parsons. You? That's so. Jackie open. Certainly, sir. And you too? Yes, sir. Come on, hurry up. Yes, sir. Oh, you two look serious. You're not talking about work in your lunchtime, are you? What about eight week? Oh, I can't think about much else. Mind you, keeping the eight, no one's going to blame me for that. Of course, I imagine. Yeah, no doubt something too briny for me. Ah, Smith, old boy, I'll tell you why I'm chasing you. It's that subscription you forgot to give me. Pardon? For Hate Week, the house to house fund. I'm treasurer over at Victory. We're making an all out effort. Victory Mansions will have more flags than the rest of the street put together. I've only got two dollars on me. That's all right. Two dollar Smith. What? <laughs> That's what everyone calls him. Two dollar Smith. Asking for a contribution to anything, and that's always his answer. Uh, two dollars? Well, I'm not going to complain. Yeah, I'll take those two dollars if you don't mind. Two dollars Smith? Oh, personally, I'd rather not be known for anything. It's safer that way. No, I don't mind. It's just a bit of fun, I imagine. I heard our little chap called you a thought criminal when you were helping unblock the sink yesterday. I imagine he was a bit upset about not going to the execution. I think your wife... Oh, don't talk about my wife. Uh, she's an excellent party member. We were busy at the community centre. That's why we didn't go. Of course, old chap. Terrific stew, wasn't it? I don't believe the meat has any actual meat in it. What a remarkable achievement. We're lucky, wouldn't you say? Of course. We're being watched. Where? Far side of the corridor. Don't turn around, Parsons. Huh? Where? Girl on the end of the anti-sex league line. Since when do they get to stand by themselves? Dark hair, scarlet league sash. I've seen her at hate sessions. She's very enthusiastic. As indeed we all are. <laughs> A moaning is part of life. It doesn't actually mean anything. I hope you two understand that. Don't want any crossed wires. Of course. Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> Do you know what that little girl of mine did last Saturday? <laughs> She was with a spy troop on a hike out Burke Hampstead Way and she and some friends slipped off and spent the afternoon following a strange man. Why did they do that? Ah, they wanted to make sure he wasn't some kind of enemy agent. 
that they'd spotted he was wearing funny shoes. He had our regulation blue overalls, but not the party issue shoes. That is pretty smart for a little girl of seven, wouldn't you say? What happened to the man? Uh, they pointed him out to a patrol in Amersham and they took him away. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't turn up at the hate week mass execution. They're going to bus in hundreds of POWs. Hang the lot. There's a whole day of it in Victory Square. They're, they're building a special stage under the column between the lions. Fantastic day out. No doubt he deserves what he gets. We can't afford to take chances. Well, after all, there is a war. Attention, comrades. The search is concluded. We have decided to get you That girl was looking at me again. Try not to look so guilty all the bloody time. Needs to be included in your target material and <sighs> Move along, please. Smith, you just lost all the tobacco out of your cigarette. Oh, I, I, I say, uh, Smith, old chap, you, you don't by any chance have a razor blade I could scrounge, do you? Hello. Good evening. You're a party man. Yes, I am. I... This isn't a trick. I'm not trying to get you arrested. Wouldn't matter if you was. Long overdue, I reckon. Can, can we go somewhere? Them steamers come down more often now. Follow me. can't see. Why do you want to see? I'll put the light on then. No telly screen. Not around here, love. Nobody bothers around here. How old are you? What do you want me to tell you? The truth. The truth is, I don't know. I used to, but I forgot. What are you doing? Taking my plate out. Expensive. <laughs> Ate it a long time. Don't fit no more. I used to be looked after in that. You're not going to get angry nor nothing. Why should I get angry? <sighs> they do sometimes. Because I'm not as young as I was. And because they can hurt me and I can't do nothing about it. Can't complain nor nothing. You're going to do it? Yes. Good. It'll be nice. Sad face. I was married. Are you married? Yes. What happened to your husband? War. What's your missus' name? Catherine. Don't she give it you? Yes, she gives it. Gave, but there's no... Love. I didn't think you party men was keen on love. And anyway, she's she's gone. Gone? Well, the party needed her elsewhere. The party. Yeah. yeah. You're not in trouble, are you? Not yet. Well, you won't let on about me when they get you. Don't worry, I'm good at forgetting people. I don't believe that. Look at your poor face. You don't forget nothing, do you? I don't reckon the face like that's going to bring you much luck. Luck? What do you mean? Lottery. Lottery of life in there. I don't do the lottery. We, we don't, don't... That's all anyone round here thinks about. Go on about it for hours in the pub and hanging about. <laughs> Most important thing. But it's... It's what? What is it? Come on. Over here. Shall I wash? <laughs> what with? No. Let's just get on. Okay? Oh, oh. When you leave, don't go back the same way you come. It's all right. I've, I've someone I want to see. I'm a colour down the <laughs> Big brother. 
Father sees you. And we give thanks for that, don't we, citizens? We know that men are weak, and we must galvanize ourselves for the task every day of our lives. And we thank him for watching over us. Big Brother's eye keeps us safe. Ah, it's nice to see you again. Hello. I saw you turn off the main road. I recognised you. I wouldn't have bothered lighting the oil lamp otherwise. But it's gloomy in here, I know. I usually close up in the afternoons. You're the gentleman that bought the young lady's keepsake album. That was a beautiful bit of paper. I hope you found a good use for it. Paper like that needs to be written on. Crying out for it. Yes, I've started using it. Out of the way of the telly screen now, I would. If I was you, you'd never know. Yes. Cream laid, it used to be called. There's been no paper like that made for, oh, I did say, 50 years. I mean, just owning something like that for someone like you could be a bit of a problem. Why isn't it a problem for you? I'm Flotsam and Jetsam. What's that? Abandoned on a far shore, forgotten. Our little businesses like mine, well, we're, we're tolerated, so to speak. And besides, I made it a rule never to put my name on anything. There's no record of me anymore, not since so much was lost in the war. I'm an honorary proletarian, and the rules are more relaxed. For who? The proles. And you might be tempted to write down your secrets. What? In the book. Oh. Given some thoughts are crimes in themselves. Not mine, though. Of course not. Is there anything special I can do for you, or do you just want to look around? I was passing. I looked in. I, I don't want anything in particular. It's just as well. Because I don't believe I could have provided it. Well, you see how it is. The antiques trade is just about finished. No demand. No stock. Furniture, china, glass, all smashed up. Metal, melted down. I can't remember the last time I saw a brass candlestick. That looks interesting. What is it? Yeah. Embedded in the glass. Right deep inside. That's coral, that is. I'm guessing it came from the Indian Ocean. Something like that. It was made over a hundred years ago. Paperweight. It's a beautiful thing. There aren't many who'd say that nowadays. There aren't many who could actually think it. Mm. If it so happened you wanted to buy it, that'd cost you four dollars. The glass is like rainwater. I'll have it. I'd, uh, I'd better wrap it, for the sake of propriety. Thank you. It was made with love. There's another room upstairs that you might care to look at. Oh, not much in it, just a few pieces. Why not? I can think of lots of reasons, but... we better take the light with us. We lived here till my wife died. I'm selling the furniture off little by little. Now, that is a beautiful mahogany bed. <laughs> At least it would be, if you could get the bugs out of it. Well, I dare say you find it a bit cumbersome. I slept in a double bed when I was small. With my mother and father and sister than just my mother and sister. I haven't seen one since. That kind of thing isn't really allowed these days, is it? No. Encourages the kind of intimate relationships that might exclude Big Brother, I suppose. Have you thought of renting the room? Well, to party people don't live round here. And I wouldn't want the sort that do. There's no telescreen. 
<laughs> of course it isn't. Before I came out this way, I hadn't seen a room without one since I was a child. I haven't ever had a telly thing. But they charge, don't they? Charge you for spying on you. It's too much to pay for something that gives no pleasure. Except for those on the other side of the screen. Watching you. Now, that doesn't go well in areas like this. Besides, it's the clever ones they need to watch, really. People like you. And they know that. Now, that's a nice gate-leg table in the corner there. Yes. Of course, you need to put hinges on it. Now, if you happen to be interested in old prints at all... Oh, it's interesting. What's it supposed to be? <laughs> Isn't supposed to be anything. It's an actual rendition of a church that used to stand near the old law courts. St. Clement Danes, its name was. I know it. It's a ruin now, outside the Palace of Justice. Oranges and lemons, says the beautiful saint. Say the bells of St. Martin's. Kindness, Winston. Remember to be kind. Kind. When will you pay me? Say the bells of Old Bailey. When I grow rich, say the bells of Shirley. Is there something the matter? What are you doing? You can't just sing any old thing. There's a law against that. Oh, nobody worries about such laws around here. I wish that rhyme we had when I was a little boy. It was a kind of dance. You got caught at the end. What do you mean? They crowded round you and caught you in their arms. And all the names of the London churches were in it. All the principal ones, that is. I didn't know it had been a church. You owe me three farthings, says the bells of St. Martin's. That's the next line. Where was St. Martin's? Oh, that's still standing. It's in Victory Square, alongside the picture gallery. It's got a triangular porch. St. Martin's in the fields. It's used for propaganda displays. Scale models of rocket bombs and floating fortresses, and waxworks of enemy atrocities, and the display of severed heads from the different races of our enemies. I can't afford the picture as well as, well as the... Paperweight. That's what it is. Ah. Hmm. What? You don't see someone in party overalls for months, then two happen along on the same day. What do you mean? Come over here. Look. In the street. A dark-haired girl in overalls and a red sash. She looks a bit suspicious to me, do you know her? No. I should give it a few minutes. Let her wander off. Better for us both, I think. Now, did you say you've been writing things in that book? Oh! Are you hurt? It's nothing. My arm. I'll be all right in a moment. Your wrist. I'm sure it'll be fine. Ow! Help me up, will you? Certainly, sister. Oh. Come closer. I love you. What? What did you say? Come closer. I love you. What? What did you say? Come closer. I love you. Kindness, Winston. What? What did you say? Remember to be kind. Come closer. I kind love you. Oh. Do you think you can stand? Please don't fuss, comrade. You can let go of me now. I am perfectly well. Sink's still blocked. Oh dear, I'm sorry. No, it's not your fault, old boy. Some sort of filth down there. 
I won't get to it tonight. We have the pre-meeting for the community hike this evening. And I'm supposed to be helping with making the hate week bunting. <laughs> well, I can't be in two places at once, and I'm blocking the sink. would we'll be the third. <laughs> Will your wife be in? Well, she's always in. She never goes anywhere. Shall I knock? Much appreciated. Right, then. If I get a moment, I'll pop over. See what I can nah. do. That would be very neighbourly. <laughs> <coughs> How's that boy of yours? Oh! <laughs> well, would you believe? <laughs> he's been practising his stalking on me. He, he's like a tiger cub. I was on my way down to the Bowser for some water after the supply went off on Tuesday evening, and I, I caught him out the corner of my eye, following me, creeping from corner to corner. He's a marvellous spy. That's, that is terrific, don't you think? That's what we need, all right. We can certainly learn a lesson from the young. Oh. What's the matter? I hoped you wouldn't finish yours. You usually don't. You seem to have got an appetite from somewhere. <sighs> oh, oh, watch out. That anti-sex league girl is coming this way. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, well, it's probably for the best. Look at the size of me. And you're not hacking your guts up all the time, either. Afternoon, sweet. Who's that? Looks like an overkeen party shit. Do you trust him? No, don't look at me. He's an idiot. You changed my life, you know. I have a reason to stay alive. I ate this muck because I know I need to get well now. What time do you leave work? 18.30. Well, where can we meet? Victory Square. On the lower steps, right towards the middle. There are hangings tonight. It's full of telly screens. Around the edge of the square. Don't turn towards me. It's hard not to look at you. It's hard not to smile. Don't you dare. We'll get our chance. They're always dried up party bitches looking for an excuse to hand in younger women. I thought you were one of them. When you get to Victory Square, don't come near me unless I'm right in among the crowd. Look out for my scarlet sash. I'll be waving it. When you get close to me, keep your eyes on the faces of the Eurasian prisoners. Don't look at me at all. Not even a glance. Squeeze my hand, pressing your thumb into my palm. That'll let me know that you're there. And I'll start talking without looking at you either. What time? Nineteen hours. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you get Sunday afternoon off? Yes. Then listen, carefully. I can say this only once and quickly. Some party shithouse will notice if we don't split up soon. We'll have to remember this. Are you listening? Yes. Go to Paddington Station. From there, we'll need to travel to... Kindness, Winston. Remember to be kind. Kind. She squeezed my hand. Briefly. A half hour and the world has changed. Turn left outside I'm behind. Station slightly to one side of her. Two kilometers along the road. The mounds of her breasts and shoulders and thighs and against buttocks press against the faded blue of her party overalls. A path across a field. The hated uniform is made beguiling by her presence inside Grass -grown lane. The anti-sex league sash pinches her waist Trapped and adds form to her lean, muscular body and pronounced bosom. A dead tree with moss on it. I am excited by her as the enemy corpses dance on the gibbets. Let them hide. Can you remember all that? Yes. You turn left, then right, then left again, and the gate's got no top bar. Yes. What time? About 15. You may have to wait for me. I'll get there by another route. For the last week, I have thought of nothing else but what you said. Before that, when I saw you in the street, I thought you were spying on me and I wanted to smash your brains in with a brick. Now I love you. Are you sure you remember everything? Yes. Then get away from me. Once we meet alone, there'll be no turning back. We'll be criminals. We're criminals already. Making arrangements to have sex for any reason other than filling the party nurseries is now officially a thought crime. It'll be announced on Monday. Now, get away as fast as you can. Don't look at me. Calm down, will ya? 
You're getting on me wick. They're just enjoying themselves. Leave them alone. Yeah. Sorry, sir. I know we're a bit of an handful, but oh. we're on holidays, aren't we, love? Oh, come off it. Not really. A day out ain't a proper holiday. Well, sounds like it feels like an holiday. Hide me half his after me. He's gold uh, look, You just calm down, Charlie. Yeah, but, Dad, Goldstein's after me. I've got to hide. What's the matter with him? Looks queer, don't he? Yeah, get right. Oh, go on, go on. Leave the gentleman alone. Oh, Dad, get off. If we're too much for you, you say and we'll move. I wouldn't dream of it. That's very nice of you, sir. I say, Mum, mm. this fella says he don't mind us making a bit of a row. Oh, well, should he? We're entitled, don't we? Man, don't start up. Sorry, sir. Uh, there's a lot she don't get these days. She don't understand respect and that. Please, uh, don't worry. Just enjoy yourselves. You going anywhere nice? Shh, Mum. You know you're not supposed to ask questions. He's a party fella. You don't ask them questions. Uh, sorry, sir. We don't see party folks. That's fine. I I'm doing this for my work. Do you often travel? Nah. Well, I used to say you up, sir, and uh, go and see her sister in Birmingham. I worked on the Ministry Furnaces, so we done all right. And, but now, uh, Birmingham's outside the 100-mile limit, and we're not allowed passports, and uh, couldn't afford them anyway. Right? That's a shame. Yeah, yeah used to travel on a coach sometimes. But since they stopped doing that because of the fuel, we can't. Sun's out, we thought. Oh, what the heck? Get out of London for the day. It's only money. <laughs> you can't take it with you. <laughs> oh, just like us, isn't they? I say, Mum, he's just like us. Who's he? I don't think so. Careful what you says. They're always listening with their speaker on and that. You can't trust them. <sighs> we can relax, I think. I can't believe I'm here. I didn't want to say anything in the lane. There are no telescreens, but there could be hidden microphones. I don't suppose there are, but there could be. There's always the chance one of those bastards listening in might recognise your voice. What about the radio cameras? Too big to hide. And you can hear the motors too easily out here. Are we all right here? Yes. There are so many saplings you can't be seen and they're too thin to hide a mic. Besides, I've been here a few times. So, you've done this before? Lots. I love doing it. Mm. It's the best thing. And the ground is soft. It's like a carpet. Bluebells. Your eyes are brown. I wondered about them. Now you've had a good look at me, are you really sure you want to go ahead? Yes, of course. I'm 39 years old. I've got a wife I can't unmarry. I've got varicose veins. I've got five false teeth. I couldn't care less. I'll be 29 soon, and I want sex with you. There. Everything you see is yours. Your body's lovely. Would you take mine off, too? Of course. Oh, dear. You don't seem very pleased. Sorry. Doesn't matter. We've got the whole afternoon. Mm. Mm. Remember to be kind. Kind. all right. You're asleep. We're naked. <laughs> yes, we are. Do we have time to do it again? Mm, I hope so. Mm. What would you be doing if this wasn't your day off? Mm. I'd be speaking corrections into mm. the recording <laughs> device. Obliterating a man or an event from history. Then I'd put a strip of sticky back paper over the newspaper story or the photo and the publication would be reprinted with the corrections. 
How did you find this place? Mm. I got lost on a community hike. I told them I was somewhere completely different so they wouldn't come and chop all of this down. What's your name? Julia. I know yours. It's Winston. Winston Smith. How do you know that? <laughs> I'm cleverer than you at finding things out. But I don't even need to try with you. It's all you can manage not to give away the anger and the disappointment you feel inside. I can see it written all over you. I bet some others can too. Mm. I do worry that I'm transparent. Of course, everyone does. We're all in the same boat. I throw myself into the hate sessions. I'm a leader of the anti-sex league meetings. I always carry one end of the banner in the processions. That way, stupid people trust me. <laughs> they tell me things. <laughs> then I can have my sex, and every time I do it, it's one in the eye to Big Brother. Big Brother? But don't you do it out of love? <laughs> Not always. Sometimes. But you see, I am a dirty cow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I've even been to the anti-sex league meetings with the smell of a man still on me. Of course, none of those daft bitches would recognise it. How old were you when you first did it? I was 16. He was a party man of 60. Later on, he committed suicide, which was a good job, because they'd have arrested him eventually, and he'd have given them my name. Did you love him? No. But he taught me how to do it properly. I hate the party. You want a good time, and they want to stop you. So I fix them any way I can. I'm glad you're a dirty cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, they trust me so much in the fiction department that they let me work on the porno set for the proles. <laughs> Last week I did spanking stories and one night in a girls' school. Oh, I've never seen those books. Oh, you're not missing anything. They're ghastly boring. You said you wanted to cave my head in. When I saw you'd followed me to the junk shop. You said you wanted to rape me. And then murder you afterwards. <laughs> me? A member of the Thought Police? That's very good. Your wife. What was she like? Naturally orthodox. Incapable of thinking critically about Ingsoc. Hmm. You should have pushed the bitch down the stairs. Well, I thought about it, but that I've got me for it. I don't feel at all guilty about what we've done. It's like being a pro. Mm, I love the pros. They're only interested in the lottery. And getting drunk, and fornicating, and in their kids, and singing. Mm. Mm. What's the matter? There's something I need to tell you. You're frightening me. I think I know someone else who's on our side. Do you know a man called O'Brien? Of course. Black overalls. Glasses. He's often in our canteen. He's interested in the new dictionary. He's glanced my way several times, and I believe he's giving me a message. What on earth makes you think that he'd be on our side? Our eyes met. And I knew he was saying, It's all right, you and I. We understand one another. I don't want you walking up to him and blurting something out. I wouldn't do that, but I have to do something. Well, if you really think there is anything in the least bit human about this O'Brien, then please carry on as normal until the day he walks straight up to you and offers you his friendship. I trust him. Well, perhaps he's trying to trick you. Julia, the last surviving members of the original inner party who fought for Ingsoc after the Patriotic War were tried on telescreen. They confessed and were released quite quickly. But that releasing business was just a pretense. They always disappear again for good. They go to the Chestnut Tree Cafe. It specialises in victory gin flavoured with clove bitters. I saw those three men. Aronson, Jones and Rutherford. Through the grimy window and I saw the look in their eyes. They were mourning themselves with tears in their eyes. That's the same look that was in O'Brien's eyes. That's why I trust him. 
Do you want some chocolate? Oh, it tastes of diesel oil these days. This is the real thing. It's black market from the inner party. Mmm. Mm -mm. I've not tasted anything mm -hmm. like it. Mm. <laughs> mm. Let me touch you. I'm good at it. Don't go out in the open. There might be someone watching. We're all right as long as you stay behind the leaves. Now it's yours. What is? Your scent that overpowers mine. This view. What? It's very familiar. Have you been here before? Is there a stream near here? With fish called dace swimming in it? Oh, I'm not sure. And a railway station called Wallington. There used to be. It was renamed after a battle somewhere. So you have been here? It's the Golden Country. The Golden Country? That's what I call it in my diary. The Golden Country. A landscape I've seen somewhere in my dreams. But how do you know the name of the station? Well, perhaps I saw it on a map and then imagined. Shh. Look. The birds have lost their fear. They don't see people. More curious now than afraid. Have you done it with members of the inner party? No. I wouldn't touch that scum. Mind you, there are plenty who would. They're not all as holy as they make out. Well, the more men <laughs> you've had, the more <laughs> I love you. Do you understand that? Yes, perfectly. I, I hate purity. I hate goodness. I don't want any virtue to exist anywhere. I want everyone oh. to be corrupt to the bones. I ought to sit you down to the ground. I am corrupt to the bones. When shall we do it again? We can come here once more. It's generally safe to use any hideout twice. But of course we can't do it for a month at least. And now I have to go. I'm due back at 1930. I've got to put in two hours helping with the junior branch of the anti-sex league. Brush my back, will you? Have I got any twigs anywhere? No. Oh, goodbye, my darling. Don't move from here for at least half an hour. Mm. 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 Goodbye, my love. Goodbye, my lovely dirty cow. Have you uh, noticed we have a new poster? No? Well, I don't see those things anymore. It's simply the monstrous figure of a Eurasian soldier. Four metres high. An expressionless Mongolian face and enormous boots. Whatever angle you look at it, the muzzle of his gun points straight at you. It's everywhere. I assume the purpose is to lash my pro neighbours into one of their periodic frenzies of patriotism. The rocket bombs have been killing more people lately. Have they? Haven't you heard them? The film theatre in Stepney was blown up. 300 died. They've been burning effigies of Goldstein. A Chinese couple were burned alive in their own house. Now, this is a decorative bottle stopper, you know. And this locket contains a strand of some long dead baby's hair. Ah! Four and twenty blackbirds. Pardon? Um, Cock Robin. Yeah, I just thought you might be uh, interested. Oh. Oh. This is it. Our room. Our room. Do you really trust him? Yes, I, I, I think I was lucky to find him. He's put some of his own sheets on the bed. He says we must get some of our own. I don't know how we're going to do that. 
Perhaps you should buy them off him. One of the League women didn't turn up last night. No one spoke about her. Everyone knows what's happened. Mm, one of the chaps in our office has gone too. Syme, his name was. A very dutiful fellow. Worked on the Newspeak Dictionary, but too clever. I can see why he might have been considered dangerous. You don't miss him, do you? <sighs> anyway, he's now an unperson. You probably thought up that very word. Dead. And he won't be mentioned and soon not thought of either. Is Charrington keeping with the shop open this afternoon? No, he'll shut up and go back to his hostel. He doesn't need to be here. <laughs> St Clement Danes. What? The picture. It's called St Clement Danes. I want to be on my back with you on top. Mm. Mm. Hello. Charrington seemed a bit away with the crows. Half in, half out of this world. I bought some pepper to chase off the bed bugs and something to block up the hole in the skirting. Has the rat been back? There are droppings. Why do you make such a fuss about it? A rat chewed my sister's ear before she died. You had a sister? We're not going to talk about that. Fine. What are you doing? I'm listening to her. In the street, behind the wall, see? Oh. That's where you were standing when I thought you were a spy. Why has she stopped? She's hung out all the washing. <sighs> her hips are a metre wide. I think she's magnificent. If we started up singing like that, they'd throw us in clink straight away. We'd disappear. And someone else would have the job of writing us out of the newspapers and all that. Yeah. How many times have we met? This is our seventh date in four months. I want this world just to dissolve. I want us to make love until we die in each other's arms. Oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I bought you something. What is it? Here. Can you guess? No. Give it a squeeze. No, <laughs> not me. The packet. Feels like sand. It's coffee. Not that victory muck. Real coffee stolen from the inner party. You're wonderful. Oh, what's the matter? I, I feel like I want to march straight up to O'Brien and ask him to help us. Everyone secretly hates the party. I suppose he might have shown you that. Well, I think O'Brien has had enough. I hope so. Four years ago, we were at war with East Asia, not Eurasia. Were we? It doesn't matter. It's all tricks and lies. I don't mind taking risks. But only for something that matters. For you and me. Your rebellion is between your legs, isn't it? Check to make sure. Mm. 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 <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Smith, isn't it? Yes. Good. My name is O'Brien. Yes. I've been hoping to run into you. I was reading one of your Newspeak articles in the Times the other day. Uh, you obviously take a scholarly interest in Newspeak. I'm only an amateur. I've never actually had anything to do with the construction of the language. But you write it very elegantly. And that's not just my opinion. I was talking to your colleague... Syme. I'm not sure I know him. Well, he's certainly an expert. He admires your work, too. Anyway, uh, what I was meaning to say was, um, I noticed you use two words which are about to become obsolete. I'm sorry. Oh, no, don't worry. But have you seen the new edition of the Newspeak Dictionary? No, we're still using the ninth in the records department. Yeah, the tenth edition has been held up. It was decided it needed revisions. But there are a few advanced copies around. I have one myself. I wonder, would you like to take a look? Very much so. 
There are some very ingenious things in it. Um, I think the reduction in the number of verbs will appeal to you. I could send a messenger with it, but I'll probably forget. If it isn't too much of an inconvenience, why don't you pop around to my flat? Yes. Of course. Good. Um, here's my card. I'm usually at home in the evenings. If not, my servant will give you the dictionary. Oh, bloody hell, he didn't. And then he mentioned Syme. Why? He, he wanted to send me a signal. By using the name of an on person, he was oh. cementing a contract between us. It was a transgression of such magnitude, it can't be ignored. Are you sure? He was saying, let's disobey, big brother. He was saying, I'm the same as you. It's exciting. I'm frightened, though. Well, if you don't trust him, just don't go. But he has made himself vulnerable, too. I must step forward and take his hand. This is a chance to do something useful. Do you think they'll get us in the end? There's no doubt about it. Both of us will end up in the Ministry of Love where we shall be tortured and die. But O'Brien will be with us. Then go and see him. When? Tonight. It's starting to rain. In 1984, by George Orwell, Winston Smith was played by Christopher Eccleston, Julia by Pippa Nixon, and O'Brien by Tim Piggott Smith. Parsons was played by Kim Wall, Charrington by Robert Blythe, Syme by Sam Alexander, and The Prostitute by Susie Riddell. Other parts were played by Christine Absalom, Don Gillet, Joe Sims, and Joshua Swinney. 1984 was dramatised by Jonathan Holloway and directed by Jeremy Mortimer. Mother! You've got to go now. I won't be here when you come back. Winston, in fact, you must have come back. Mother! Kindness, Winston. Remember to be kind. Embedded in the glass. That's coral, that is, isn't it, Kate? the Indian Ocean. It was made over a hundred masses like rainwater. Paper away. Come closer. I love you. What? What did you say? Come closer. I love you. 1984 by George Orwell. Dramatised by Jonathan Holloway. With Christopher Eccleston as Winston Smith and Tim Piggott-Smith as O'Brien. <laughs> Wake up, Winston. Wake up. <sighs> you were dreaming, twitching and muttering. Oh. I was back at the end of the 1950s, during the war. Um, my mother was there. On the day the soldiers came for her and she told me to try and be kind. And then I was trapped inside the paperweight Charrington sold me. Encased in glass, suffocated and fixed, unable to move. Crushed against the piece of pink coral and from inside I could make out a distorted image. Me as a boy standing outside the chestnut tree cafe peering in at something. My mother knew exactly the cold, coarse world the party planned for us all. Her last words have kept me human. What about our love? <sighs> Tell me about the cafe. Oh, it's... Where party men who'd been denounced went before they disappeared for good, I watched them through the window, staring and crying. Oh, it's half past 18. We should get dressed soon and go and see O'Brien. 
What was that? It's only Charrington. I think you ought to check. Mr. Charrington, is that you? Yes, it's me. Don't worry, they haven't caught us yet. I thought I'd come back and tidy up a bit. You've inspired me to make a little more effort, Mr. Smith. Uh, but don't worry, I'm sure I'll soon get bored and take myself off. I dream about my mother all the time now. I did something that was very wrong. What happened? My father had been taken away and it was just myself, my mother and sister, and she always seemed unwell and clung to my mother like a baby monkey. I stole the food out of her hand. I stood there watching my mother put her arm around my little sister and that gesture told me my sister was dying. Children are cruel. And if they aren't naturally, then the party teaches it to them. I don't want any bloody children. The party tries at every turn to tell us that feelings, impulses, are not worth anything. Hmm. They want us to think everything is pitiful because everything vanishes, so why bother? And of course that's why they take people often perfectly obedient, good party members. There's no point in relationships because that person can be snatched away. Oh. And they know people need something to believe in. So they give us the traitor Goldstein and the war and Mongol-faced troops who would pull the skin off our backs for fun. A few weeks ago, I walked past the place where a rocket bomb had landed and there was a severed hand lying on the pavement and I kicked it into the gutter like it was a rotten cabbage. We're barely human anymore. Has it occurred to you that the best thing would be to simply walk out of here and never see each other again? I have thought about it. But I'm not going to. We've been lucky. But it can't last much longer. If I confess, they'll shoot you. And if I don't confess, they'll shoot you just the same. We shall be utterly without power of any kind. What matters is that we mustn't let them stop us loving each other. That would be the real betrayal. We must stay human, even if it can't do us any good. We can do that. We won't let them inside us. No. Perhaps O'Brien will save us. Let's get dressed and go to see him. Items 1, 5, 7. Approved full wise stop. Suggestion contained item 6, double plus ridiculous virgin crime think. Cancel stop. Unproceed construction wise, getting plusful estimates, machinery overheads, stop. End message. You can turn it off. We have that privilege. I had expected you to come alone. This is Julia. We are lovers. And we share the same beliefs. Hmm. Well then, shall I say it or will you? Are you sure that thing is really turned off? Yes, everything is turned off. We are alone. We've come here because... Go ahead. We've come here because we believe there is some kind of conspiracy, some kind of secret organisation working against the party and that you are involved in it. We want to join it and work for it. We are enemies of the party. We are also lovers and, as I am still married, adulterers. We have decided to put ourselves at your mercy. Oh, don't be alarmed. Martin is one of us. Let's sit at the table. Martin, will you join us? Certainly. Although I shall have to reply to some messages that have just arrived from your office, a delay would be difficult to explain. Martin and I preserve the established codes for the sake of appearance, although the Brotherhood 
is democratic. Please sit down. It's called wine. No doubt you will have read about it in books. Not much of it gets to the outer party, I'm afraid. A toast to our leader, Emmanuel Goldstein. Then there is such a person as Goldstein? Yes, there is such a person. And he is alive. Whereabouts, I do not know. And the conspiracy, the organization? Is it real? The Brotherhood, we call it. You will never learn much more about the Brotherhood than it exists and that you belong to it. I'll come back to that presently. It is unwise even for members of the inner party to turn off the telescreen for more than half an hour. You ought not to have come here together. It has made you conspicuous. As there is no lawful reason for you to have done so, you will have to leave separately. We have about 20 minutes. I shall have to ask you some questions in order to judge how serious you are. We're capable of anything. Are you prepared to give your lives? Yes. Yes. You are prepared to commit murder? Yes. Yes. To commit acts of sabotage which may cause the death of hundreds of innocent people? Yes. Yes. To betray your country to foreign powers? Yes. yes. If it would serve our interests to throw sulfuric acid into a child's face, would you be prepared to do that? Yes. Yes. Are you prepared to surrender your identity? and live the rest of your life as a dock worker or a waiter, much as Martin here has done? Yes. yes. Are you prepared to commit suicide if and when we order you to do so? Yes. yes. Are you prepared, the two of you, to separate and never see one another again? No. No. You did well to tell me. It's necessary for us to know everything. Julia, do you understand that if he survives, it may be as a different person? His face, his movements, the shape of his hands, the color of his hair, even his voice might be changed. And you yourself might have to be changed beyond recognition by one of our surgeons. Martin's eyelids have been cut to westernize him. Sometimes we even amputate a limb. Good. It's settled, then. You'd better go back to the pantry, Martin. I shall switch on in 15 minutes. Please take a good look at their faces. You will be seeing them again. I may not. Goodbye. Well done. You must understand that you will be fighting in the dark. You will receive orders and you will obey them without knowing why. I shall send you a book that will teach you the true nature of the society we live in. Your contacts will change from time to time as the old ones are arrested and killed. I am your first contact, and we will continue communication as long as we are able. I will give you orders through Martin, whose role is to protect me from suspicion by sacrificing himself. But we must assume you and I will be caught eventually. When they catch you, you will not be able to betray more than a dozen people. It sounds terribly lonely. It has to be. How shall we know if we're making any difference? You will get no comradeship and no encouragement. But we may have hope, don't you think? No, you shan't have hope. We are the dead. Feels like falling forwards into a damp grave. You must leave first, comrade. How do you stand the loneliness? You just keep going. Look out for chances to pass the news that resistance exists. Let's finish our wine. To the confusion of the thought police. To the death of Big Brother. To humanity. To the future. To the past. Indeed. The past is more important. To the past. I presume you have a hiding place, otherwise how could you talk to each other? An old junk shop, run by an elderly fellow called Charrington. Very good. Goodbye, Julia. It's likely we won't see each other face to face again. Goodbye. Winston? He needs to stay for half an hour. Goodbye. See you at the shop. 
Goodbye, sir. Please, take one of those tablets to suck. You mustn't be caught smelling of wine. Goodbye. Charrington, eh? That's right. We'll have to arrange somewhere new. You can't establish habits. Now, Goldstein's book. Do you carry a briefcase to work? Yes, every day. What's it like? Regulation black, two straps. All right. One day, quite soon, you will receive an instruction at work for a new editing task, and the note will contain a misspelled word. On the following day, you will go to work without your briefcase. At some point in the street, a man will touch you on the arm and say, I think you've dropped your briefcase. The one he gives you will contain a copy of Goldstein's book. It will also contain an instruction describing where you should leave it 14 days later for us to collect. Thank you. It's... What is it? Exciting, I suppose. Hmm. I haven't thought of it like that for a long time. Perhaps too long. Listen. Although you will receive instructions from me, I shall not acknowledge you when we pass at the Ministry of Truth. My messages will come through others. So, shall we actually talk again? Sadly, I think that is inevitable. In the place where there is no darkness. What? It's a phrase my mother used. It's just come back to me. I think she was right. Yes. In the place where there is no darkness. Is there anything you want to ask before you leave? Yes. I have, actually. It's silly. Do you know an old rhyme that begins, Oranges and lemons say the bells of St. Clemens? You owe me three farthings, say the bells of St. Martin's. When will you pay me? Say the bells of Old Bailey. When I grow rich, say the bells of Shoreditch. Ah, you do know it. I used to know a lot of things that aren't much use to me now. I'm afraid it's time for you to go. Shall we meet? Really? I'm sure of it. Winston? Can you hear me? What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. I've got a surprise for you. Are you in bed? Yes. Oh. What do you think? You look wonderful. <laughs> Beautiful. Mr. Charrington found the dress for me. It used to belong to his wife. And there is an old box with the makeup still in it. Oh. oh, don't cry, my darling. This is my treat for you. You look. You look so lovely. <laughs> I'm doing this for you. For both of us. I'm going to do it whenever we meet. Take it off now. Oh. Slowly. Please. Ah, oh, you look wonderful with your painted face. It's the washerwoman in next door's yard, as if she's singing for us. They say the time. They say you can always forget But the smiles and the tears across the years They twist my heartstrings yet Do you think the book is safe? I don't expect Mr Charrington will come in and poke around I can't imagine him crawling under the bed lifting floorboards <laughs> You think it's really worth our lives? Yes, I do would you like to read it? I'd like to have sex. Mm. If what O'Brien says is true, then we only have so many times left to us. But the smiles and the tears across the years, they twist my heartstrings yet. 
I bet she would rather have sex than read. She can't read. Now they're not taught and don't know. <sighs> Should I have a special voice? What? Like priests used to use. <laughs> I don't think you need a special voice. The splitting up of the world into three great superstates was begun in the middle of the 20th century by the land grabs that followed the World War. Oceania is founded on the United States acquisition of Britain and much of its post-imperial Commonwealth. Remember to be kind. America's Remember to be kind, you owe me ten shillings, say the bells of St. Helens. When will you pay me, say the bells of Old Bailey, when I grow rich. But the war will the never be permitted or able to take a decisive turn, as peace is not in the interest of the political classes. Julia. Julia, are you awake? Mm, hello. Do you remember the thrush that sang to us that first day at the edge of the wood? He wasn't singing to us. He was singing to please himself. Not even that, he was just singing. The birds sing, the proles sing, and the party doesn't sing. We are the dead. We are the dead. You are the dead! It was behind the picture. It was behind St. Clement Danes. Get out of the bed! <laughs> no! Don't put your clothes on. Put your hands behind your heads. Stand back to back. They can see us. We can see you. The washerwoman. The house is surrounded. The house is surrounded. Winston! Mr. Charrington, they got you too. I'm so sorry. You might as well say goodbye, Richard. Oh, and by the way, it's here comes a candle to light you to bed. Here comes a chopper to chop off your head. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh. Right, you bastards. That's it. You make the move, we don't tell you to make it. Get your elbows smashed. No one told you to do that. The paperweight was a useful item, a good viewer. Sorry. Pick I... up the pieces, please. And put the little bit of coral on the mantelpiece. Mr. Charrington. I offered you the chance to say goodbye. You chose not to take it. That moment has passed. Keep quiet now. And yes, you're right. Although you would have been in the company of my kind previously, you won't have known about it. This is indeed the first time you have knowingly been in the presence of an officer of the Thought Police. Oh, oh. Oh. Winston! Silence! Do not speak, or it will be the worst for you. Look, Eric. Look at that one. What about him? He's cacking himself. <laughs> they all cacks themselves. Smith! 6079 Smith W. Take your hands out of your pockets in the cells. Tell her to F off. Go on. Tell her. Come on, Smith. Tell her. He ain't gonna tell her nothing. On account, he's cacking himself. So he should be. That made him look, Des. It gave you look then, all right? You party ones. You get worse than us. We don't care. We ain't never cared. They keep us in here, and they chucks us away when they're ready. Trick is, do a few of the bastards along the way, that's what I say. Do them back. Give it them back. What about old knackers, eh? He's the one who's brought you in here. He don't like your sort. He'll give your elbow a clout with his stick. That's his trick, isn't it, Des? Crack the bone in your elbow. <laughs> Makes you feel like spewing. He hates your sort. Why should I be afraid? What will they do? Oh, he spoke up, Des. Yeah, maybe if I'm good and I say sorry, they'll be nice to let me go. They'll put bloody wires on you. And you'll scream the place down. Here. Yeah. You got a girl, Smith? Ha 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 He gave you a lot, then. You got him, Eric. 
Does your girl love you? Yeah, I reckon she love us and all. It was a knot. We take it. We are it. Parsons. What are you in for? There is only one offence, isn't there? No, I've committed it. You don't think they'll shoot me, do you, old chap? They don't shoot you if you only thought something which you can't help but... No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the... Fair hearing. Oh, the Ministry of Love. I, I, I trust them completely on that score. They, they, they know all about my good record. <laughs> Cut brainy, of course, but keen. Chap like me could make himself pretty useful in a Labour camp. Are you guilty? No, of course I'm guilty. Don't think the party would arrest an innocent man, do you? I thought crime is a dreadful thing, isn't it? Started talking in my sleep. Down with Big Brother. I said it over and over again, it seems. I, I, I'm glad they got me before I went any further. Thank you. I'm going to say thank you for saving me before it was too late. Who denounced you? How oh, it was my... my little daughter. She was listening at the keyhole. She heard what I was saying and nipped off to the patrols the very next day. I'm grateful to her. It shows up brought her up the right way. You'll have to excuse me, old man. It's not as if I've got a choice. I can't help it. It's, it's the fear, the waiting. Smith! 6079, Smith, W. Uncover your face. Uncover your eyes, your nose and your mouth. No covering of faces is allowed in the cells. <laughs> I'm sorry, old chap. It seems to be broken. I can't, I can't get rid of it. I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> If ever there was a dirty bastard deserve what's coming to miss you, you fat bloody pig. Eight persons! So, where are we going? If I have to come over there to your stink, then I'll bloody well wrap this stick around your head, fat so. But... Room 101, of course. You're gonna get what you deserve. Disgusting. Uh, but, please. Right. I warned you! <laughs> 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 Oh, I understand. I understand. Cry, but please. Why would I want it? Not needed. I, I repent. You say who you want me to give away. I've got a wife and two children. You can cut their throats right in front of me. I don't care. Him. One. Four. One. Smith. It's him you ought to be taking. You don't know what he's been saying. Something must have gone wrong with the telly screen, so you didn't hear what he said. Take him! Take him, not me! Room 101. <laughs> Wait! Till... <laughs> what did you say? His dental plate. It's on the floor. There. Mm. Oh dear. It's broken. You'll have to do with it. Eh? Anything more to say? No. I don't think so. Get it! Get it! <laughs> You too. I'm afraid they got me a long time ago. Winston, please stop deluding yourself. You just wanted to believe it was all possible, didn't you? Yes. <sighs> the 
If I could save Julia by doubling the pain you will inflict on me, then I'd do it. Would you? Really? His elbow, please. Everything explodes into yellow light. Inconceivable, inconceivable that one blow could cause such pain. Of course, the thing about pain is well, you can only wish one thing, that it should stop. In the face of pain, there are no heroes, Winston. Do you know where you are? I don't understand. I told you when we drank wine together that if we ever met again, it would be here, in this place of light, where there is never darkness. We put you to sleep and we moved you. Ah! <laughs> You've seen it. What? This is the machine. You're now connected to it by the copper plate set into the surface of the bench, and that's why you're in your pants. Please, no. I don't want you to start up. Please. <sighs> Open your eyes and look. There are two controls. This dial determines the amount of electricity delivered by the copper plates. This switch turns the current on and off. I just gave you 40%. The total is obviously 100%. I'm your interrogator now, and if you tell me any lies, or attempt to prevaricate, pretend you're stupider than I know you to be, then you will instantly cry out in pain. Oh, my back. Yes, I know. You have for many years suffered with back pain. It's a result of poor diet that your vertebrae are decaying, and you're right to worry, because the current forces your muscles into spasm, and there is a danger you may harm yourself, perhaps even paralyze yourself, if you are difficult or obstinate. Why are you doing this? You don't need to. I'm taking trouble with you, Winston. You are mentally ill. You are unable to remember real things and instead substitute them with deranged images of people and events that do not exist. Let's try an example. Who is Oceania currently at war with? When I was arrested, we were at war with East Asia. East Asia, good. And Oceania has always been at war with East Asia, has it not? I remember that one week before I was arrested, we were not at war with East Asia at all. We were in alliance with them. The war was against Eurasia. That war had lasted for the previous four years before Enough! That. Let's have another example. Now, some years ago, you had a very serious delusion. I read it in the diary you wrote in your vellum notebook. You saw three ex-party members called Jones, Aronson and Rutherford in the Chestnut Tree Cafe. This shocked you because you believed you had once held in your hand a photograph cut from a newspaper that proved their innocence because they weren't anywhere near the site of their crimes. And this is that very photo. How did you find it? That doesn't matter, because it's going into the memory hole. Ashes. Dust. But it did exist. It does exist. It exists in my memory. I remember it. You remember it. I do not remember it. What does the party say about control of the past? Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. Yes, who controls the present controls the past. Is it your opinion that the past has a real existence? I'm trying to have a serious conversation with you. You may not be much of a metaphysician, but at least do me the courtesy of trying. Ask the question again. Does the past exist concretely in space? No. 
Then where does the past exist, if at all? In records. It is written down. In records and... In human memories. Memory. Very well, then. We, the party, control all the records. And so it follows we can control the memories, too. But you can't stop people remembering things. It's involuntary. You have not controlled my memory. On the contrary, you have not controlled your own memory. In our time, here, right now, the only sane mind that exists is the mind of the party. What the party holds to be the truth is the truth. To become sane, I must destroy my memory. Yeah, you wrote in your diary that freedom is the freedom to say that two plus two makes four. Yes, I did. How many fingers am I holding up, Winston? Four. And if the party says it is not four, but five, then how many? Four. That was 55%. How many fingers, Winston? Four. Sixty. Sixty. Be careful of your back. How many fingers, Winston? Four. Four. What else can I say? Four! Seventy ah! percent. Ah! How many fingers, Winston? Four! Stop it! Stop it! How could you carry on like this? You know there are four! Four! Ah! 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 How many fingers? Five! Five! No, Winston. That's no use. You still think there are four. How many fingers, please? Four! Five! Four! Anything you like! Only stop it! Stop the pain! Oh, you are a slow learner, Winston. How can I help it? Two, two or four! Sometimes they are, Winston. Sometimes they are five. Sometimes they are three. Oh, dear me. It isn't easy to become sane, is it? I'm putting the dial up to 75. I confess, I'm concerned about your back. Then don't do it. Again, then? Aren't you going to ask me the question? How many fingers are there, Winston? Four. I, I would see five if I could. I'm trying to see five. No, but which do you wish to achieve? Persuading me that you see five or really seeing them? Really to see them? Then for your sake, I'm going to skip 75%. And go straight to 90. No! No! How many fingers am I holding up, Winston? Oh no! I don't know! You'll kill me! You'll break my breath! Ah! Ah! Do you know where you are, Winston? In the Ministry of Love. Do you know how long you've been here? I think it's months. And why do you imagine that we bring people here? To make them confess. No. To make them sane. What will you do then? We shall, either metaphorically or actually, turn you into gas and pour you into the stratosphere. Nothing will remain of you. Not a memory in a living brain. You will never have existed. In that case, since you intend to destroy me utterly, why go to all the trouble of interrogating me or trying to make me sane? Our rule must be absolute, and we must erase any resistance. We cannot tolerate dissent anywhere in the world, however secret and powerless it may be. Now, you have to understand, we are bringing human social evolution to an absolute stop. We shall not be one of the many civilizations that have risen and fallen throughout history. We are permanent. We will make your brain perfect before we blow it out of your head. We must squeeze you empty, then fill you with ourselves. What are those? I would have preferred, and we always prefer, to change the whole person rather than take cheap shortcuts. But you are hard work, Winston. These will modify you. 
taking away a little part of you, but perhaps making you happier or rather content with what is happening. Uh, this won't hurt. It will actually make you feel better. Now, um, lie down. Now, just bite on this piece of leather, will you? Are you back, Winston? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Don't worry. Perhaps it feels as if everything is almost the same, but some part of you has been taken away. You can't quite tell which, but um, you feel its absence. Perhaps. What country is Oceania at war with? I don't remember. Oceania is at war with East Asia. Do you remember that now? Yes. Oceania has always been at war with East Asia. Do you remember that? Yes. I am holding up my hand. There are five fingers. Do you see five fingers? Yes, I do. My hand is not deformed, is it? No. Today it just happens to have five fingers and a thumb. Yes? Yes. And so you can see what I've been discussing with you all these weeks is, in fact, possible. I can. I enjoy talking to you, Winston. Now, before we bring today's session to a close, I'm going to let you ask me whatever questions you like. Really? Any question I like? Anything. What have you done with Julia? She betrayed you, Winston. Immediately and unreservedly. I've seldom seen anyone come over to us so quickly. All her rebelliousness, her dirty-mindedness, everything has been burned out of her. It was a perfect conversion. When you said she betrayed me, what do you mean? Next question. Did you torture her? Next question. Does Big Brother exist? Of course. The party exists, so Big Brother exists. Does he exist in the same way I exist? You do not exist. I exist. I was born and I shall die. I occupy a particular point in space. It is of no importance. He exists. Does the Brotherhood, Goldstein's anti-Inksock Brotherhood, exist? You shall never know. Even if we let you live until you're 90, you shall never know. If Goldstein does not exist, and if you were always intent upon arresting me and curing me... Yes. Why go to all the trouble of writing and printing Goldstein's book with all its thousands of words? I actually wrote it. That is to say, I collaborated on writing it. As you know, we do not produce books as individuals anymore. And its purpose, its supposed credible program for undermining Ingsoc and its fantasy about proletarian revolution, that's all intended to give you hope for a secret accumulation of knowledge, for an enlightenment, for the illumination of the people and their eventual overthrow of the party. It aims to give hope and draw moths to its flame. Before the party, there was nothing. Outside man, there is nothing. What about the stars? Small crucibles of fire a few kilometers above. They don't deserve our attention. The heavens are only of interest for their function as a navigational aid. But even to navigate by them, we must know their motions, distances, behaviors. How can human beings become so involved with their workings and at the same time think of the universe as a meaningless jumble of marks in the sky? Your thought crimes are directly related to your refusal to accept the sublime release provided by Doublethink which allows a human being to seek to know only that which is useful and nothing more. Ignorance is necessary. It's wonderful, powerful. It is the bulwark of doublethink. And behind it all sits violence. Violence is the key. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever.
Sooner or later, the population will see you for what you are, and they will tear you to pieces. By changing the language, we narrow thought. Within a few years, the population will be unable even to consider change. They literally won't have a word for it. What's in room 101? You know what's in room 101, Winston. Everyone knows what's in room 101. I have not betrayed Julia. Oh, no, no, that's perfectly true. You have not betrayed Julia. When will I be shot? It might be a long time. You're a difficult case. But don't give up hope. Everyone is cured sooner or later. In the end, we shall shoot you. Oh, you look much better. Fatter, stronger. Incarceration is doing you good. Um, how's the uh, the ulcer on your leg? Better. And uh, your teeth? Uh, they said they'd pulled them all out and given you dentures. Yes, they feel good. Thank you. And thank you for the slate and the chalk. Yes, you've been writing. Could I have paper? Uh, no. The slate can be wiped once you've filled it. That's good because it has no memory. Paper, on the other hand. I understand. I hear you've been sleeping quite well. Will there be a time when the light will be turned off? Not in here, I'm afraid. <laughs> what do you dream about? A golden country. Enormous sunlit ruins. With my mother. With Julia. With you. <laughs> what do we get up to in your dreams? We talk of peaceful things. Is there something you want to say to me? I've missed you. And? I have accepted everything. Go on. The past is alterable, but the past has never been altered. Oceania has always been at war with East Asia. Hmm. Jones, Aronson and Rutherford were guilty of the crimes with which they were charged. <laughs> there never was a photograph that disproved their guilt. Yeah, and how do you feel? I hardly know why I ever rebelled. If I said to you that by a simple act of will I could float off this floor and up into the air like a soap bubble, would you agree that is true? Of course. Tell me more, Winston. Uh, it's obvious. That if I say I can float in the air, then I can? Yes. If you think you can float off the floor, if I think I see you do it, then the thing happens. Ah. I see. What's the matter? You are assuming there is still a real world where I didn't float off the floor at all, a world of so-called facts. You imply there is a space between believing what you are told to believe and knowing it actually isn't true. I don't think that's a problem. Don't you? No. Oh, sometimes with you I feel like I'm teaching a child. You're an intelligent man. Why doesn't your mind work more deftly? Everyone's sane understands they can believe conflicting things simultaneously because conflicting things can simultaneously be true. Double think, Winston, double think. We invented it so that people can remain sane. As part of this, one's mind has to learn the ability to stop dangerous thoughts instinctively. Ban them. That's what crime stop means. But I suppose we're getting there. We must both be patient. I'm sorry. I am trying. Well, tell me more about your dreams. Are there ever anxieties in them? I think about Julia. Of course you do, but don't worry, that will stop. I don't want it to. Really? Why not? Because I am convinced that somewhere she is suffering, that she is alive and needs my help. I remember the texture of her skin. In my dream, she has an overwhelming presence, more real than waking life.
get up. Look at my face, Winston. You have been deceiving me. Stand up straighter. Look me in the face. You are improving intellectually. There's very little wrong with you. Tell me, Winston, and remember, no lies. You know I can tell when you're lying. Tell me, what are your true feelings towards Big Brother? I hate him. You hate him. Good. You were very weak, and I was afraid we might kill you. You are stronger now, strong enough for what's necessary. The time has come for you to take the last step. You must love Big Brother. It is not enough to obey him. You must love him. Guards, take him to room 101. When you asked what Room 101 was, there was no need for me to explain because you already knew perfectly well. Everyone knows what Room 101 is. They know from the nature of the title and from the phrasing, the way it's spoken. Room 101 is the worst thing in the world. When you were a child and we took your mother and your sister and you came back to that flat. You didn't know what to do. You were there, I believe, for at least a fortnight. That's what your file says. A fortnight alone and starving. And you fell asleep. And when they found you, the rats had nibbled your ears and your fingers. Do you remember that? No. You're making it up. What do you think about rats? I hate them. I stay away from them. <laughs> Which is difficult in London, where they're certainly more numerous than people. None of this is necessary. What do you want me to do? Well, sometimes pain is not enough. Sometimes we must subject a person to something so horrible that they cannot resist and will surrender by instinct. And, uh, this cage surrounds your head and can be secured around the neck. There is, as you can see, an oblong box attached opposite your face. It has two sliding doors in it. These can allow a creature, a spider, a snake, or whatever, to progress steadily towards your face. As the doors slide open, it gets closer until finally... well... You understand the rest. I'm not afraid of anything like that. I don't mind creatures. Nurse. Thank you, nurse. Would you, uh, please? What use could I be with my face eaten off? Well, you aren't any use now, are you? This is a last effort to save you from insanity, Winston. A last effort at curing you. If the animals do get to your face, it'll be because we have failed. And there would be no point in keeping you alive any longer. In some parts of the proletarian quarter, women dare not leave a baby alone in a room for more than a few minutes. Rats are carnivorous and voracious when confident or angry. I have pressed the first lever. Julia, 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 mother, mother, Julia, Julia. There is now only one door between the rats and your face. They will first attack those parts they can easily bite. Extremities and edges, your nostrils, ears, eyelids, lips. Then they will work into the soft parts of your mouth and cheeks. <laughs> Although it's repulsive to us, the rats will not be deterred by the smell of your vomit. They are foragers, too, and it will excite them all the more, Winston. Mother! Julia! 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 My hand is on the final lever now. The rats have smelt you. They are ready for you, Winston. No! Do it to Julia! Do it to Julia, not me! Julia! I don't care what you do to her! Tear her face off! Slip to the bone, not me, Julian, not me! Ah! Ah! 
Welcome to the Chestnut Tree Cafe. Gin? Would you like essence of cloves in it? It's a speciality. You haven't tried it. Can I sit? Well, I will do anyway. I saw you through the window. Listen. I just want to say something. In case we run into each other again. Chess? Who are you playing? Myself. Listen. I want to be clear. You're not to come near me. I betrayed you. I betrayed you too. Sometimes they threaten you with something you can't stand up to. Can't even think about letting them do to you. And then you say, don't do it to me, do it to someone else, do it to him. And I said that because they helped me understand how selfish you really are. How you only cared about yourself all along. If you cared about me, then you wouldn't have let any of it happen. All you care about is yourself. And after they've made you realise, then you can't feel the same about that other person. You. Anymore. Anyway, I have to get to the tube station. What's that? What? You've written something with the gin with your finger on the table. Have I? Look for yourself. Two plus two equals... What? What does it equal? I don't know, do you? I don't understand. It's good to see you. We must do it again. I have to go. Goodbye. Goodbye. Under the spreading chestnut tree We lay together, you and me We were as happy as could be the spreading chestnut tree under the spreading chestnut tree in 1984 by George Orwell Winston Smith was played by Christopher Eccleston O'Brien by Tim Pickett Smith Julia by Pippa Nixon Charrington by Robert Blythe and Parsons by Kim Wall other parts were played by Christine Absalom Sam Alexander, Don Gillet, Susie Riddell, and Joe Sims. 1984 was dramatised by Jonathan Holloway and directed by Jeremy Mortimer.